You know, I, I'm not going to even respond to the hypocrisy. I'll just read from the New York Times this morning. Uh, Peter Baker, uh, in his latest analysis for the New York Times titled Trump Outrage in the Modern Era of Political Violence, Peter Baker writes this in part. At the heart of today's eruption of political violence is Mr. Trump, a figure who seems to inspire people to make threats or take actions both for him and against him. He has long favored the language of violence in his political discourse, encouraging supporters to beat up hecklers, threatening to shoot looters and undocumented migrants, mocking a near fatal attack on the husband of the Democratic House Speaker and suggesting that a general he deemed disloyal be executed. While Mr. Trump insists his fiery speech to supporters on January 6, 2021, was not responsible for the subsequent ransacking of the Capitol, he resisted pleas from advisors and his own daughter, other family members as well, that day to do more to stop the assault. He even suggested that the mob might be right to want to hang his vice president and has since embraced the attackers as patriots whom he may pardon if elected again. Uh, Jim Messina, it, this is, this is, again, it's, it's, it's barely even worth responding to. Uh, and I, I, I can say that on a personal level, uh, and, uh, you know, him suggesting that I should be executed after he was angry at my COVID reporting, which basically was just reading his quotes over six months time, uh, uh agreeing that that Liz Cheney should be set before a military tribunal because she endorsed Kamala Harris, um, suggesting uh, that, that violence should be done to others um, uh, and his supporters suggesting <clears throat> that the hosts of the ABC debate should be imprisoned uh, and he welcomes treason. to Mar-a-Lago people who have racist right. beliefs and, among other things, well, yeah, who are yeah, not yeah. Uh, de democratic in their values. Yeah, but we, we, we're talking about violence here. And again, the, the real introduction to violent rhetoric in America uh, in presidential campaigns has been unprecedented since Donald Trump first came onto the scene in 2016. Boy, it really has, Joe and Mika, and you're exactly right. I mean, look at Richmond, Virginia, where he said both sides were good people, you know, as they burned their tiki torches and, and chanted anti-Jewish sentiments. You know, J.D. Vance is just the latest symptom of what Trump started. I mean, he admitted that the Springfield uh, pet thing was made up by him and others to highlight an issue. And now they're on their third day of not being able to go to school because of bomb threats and not having a government because of bomb threats in the city hall. This is what he has wrought upon American politics. And it's now everywhere. His acolytes and his his party has just become willing enablers of this. And we're seeing this all over the place with 49 days left in this election. His supporters have filed over 100 lawsuits around the country trying to restrict voting rights, trying to restrict early voting, trying to change the laws to favor their anti-democratic movement right as people are going to the polls. We have never seen threats to democracy like these guys and Donald Trump. And in seven weeks, if we're not very careful, he could win again.